Here's an interesting fact for you, or maybe it's not. This is Carplan's number one super gloss. Now this is the very first product that was sent to me by a manufacturer for review, so I have to thank the, uh, the people at Tetrasil for sending this. I like the product, it's a good product. I just didn't find that it lasted very long and I wondered for there were maybe a couple of reasons why. One was that I thought perhaps the paint had not been prepared properly. It does only mention that you wash your paint and that's it. And I thought maybe decontamination would help, but I didn't follow it, I just followed their instructions. Another thing that stood out to me was that this was the only product in the number one branding. They have many other products in their lineups, uh, which are families of products like the Triple Wax line, like the Demon line, but there was nothing else that had number one. Well, that's changed. Towards the tail end of last year, they released two other products in the number one branding. So you've got number one Super Clean, that's the shampoo, and number one Super Detox, which is an iron fallout remover, both designed to help in this system to prepare the paint ready for number one super gloss. So it'll be very interesting to see how these work. I'm going to be testing them today and finding out are they any good and is number one super gloss still as good as I remember it? Has it changed, got any better or any worse? That's all coming up. Now, as you can see, I have already used these products. I have tested them first before making this video, just to be sure. But I'll go through the instructions and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what they're all about. So this does say that it's an ideal pre-treatment before you apply number one super gloss. So again, tying into the, the number one family here. However, it is a little bit strange here because it says for best results, use number one super detox first. That's the iron fallout remover. Now, what they're basically saying is spray this onto a dirty car, and I don't agree with that. As far as I've always been concerned, you wash your car first, so you give it a pre-wash and a safe wash to remove as much dirt as you possibly can, and then remove the harder to remove contaminants afterwards, usually iron fallout, tar, and then anything else just sticking to the paint that you cannot remove through chemical means, which is when you would use a clay bar or a clay mitt. Now, they're basically saying, use this first. If I spray this onto a dirty car, what if there's some dirt on top of the iron fallout that this is supposed to be interacting with? It's gonna be masked, it's gonna be covered. It's not going to be easy to remove. It, it might just completely wash over it and, and not touch it at all. In that regard, I would ignore that and say, use the shampoo first. But they say on the shampoo, use this first, use the iron fallout first, then the shampoo. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that. So. My personal opinion, no, wash the car first, okay? Uh, just to get that out of the way. Then uh, rinse off the loose dirt with cold water. Yeah, that's fine. Shake well before use. I don't know why, it's already super foamy. But yeah, apparently you've got to shake it and then it looks like uh, a well fizzed up bottle of iron brew. Pour 50 ml, which is approximately three caps full. That's fine, okay? Into a bucket and add clean warm water double the dosage for extremely dirty vehicles. But they don't say how much water. How big is your bucket? I have five gallon buckets. These are US gallon buckets. So I've got five gallon buckets. That's a lot of water. The, the typical UK builder's bucket that many people have for washing their car is around about 10 to 15 liters maybe. So how much is, what is the actual dilution ratio? They don't state, they're just saying, you've got a bucket, throw in three capfuls. Why does it make a difference how many capfuls you put in? Because you're not telling people how much water you're using. So again, I would, if I were the people at uh, Tetrasil, at Carplan, I'd be making a note of that. Then, <laughs> use a sponge or a wash brush. <laughs> okay, <coughs> excuse me. Don't use a sponge or a wash brush. Use a wash mitt. It can be any kind of wash mitt you want. It can be this kind of woolly type. It can be this kind of the cheap Chinese things that uh, I love. It can be things like noodle mitts if you want. But basically, use some sort of safer wash mitt than a sponge or a brush. They are not as safe. They're not as good. If you want to find out more information about that, I made a video called What is a Safe Wash? You can click it up here. 
Use a mitt and ideally use two buckets, a rinse bucket and a soapy water bucket, okay? That's, that's the best way to do it, so. <laughs> Please stop telling people to use sponges or brushes. Wash it from top to bottom, that's fine. Rinse it with clean water, that's fine. Then use a chamois or... <laughs> Don't use a chamois either. Don't use a chamois, use a good drying towel. Uh, you know, a, a drying towels can be had relatively cheap. I know that's a more expensive one, but you can get cheap ones for about a fiver um, and they'll do a decent job. Use a drying towel, not a chamois. Otherwise, that's about it. Then add a layer of number one super gloss. Okay, that's fine, right, okay. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look at Super Detox, just in case there's anything mentioned on here. So it eliminates stubborn iron oxide deposits, creating a silky smooth surface. Okay, that much is true. It doesn't remove the iron fallout specifically. It dissolves the iron oxide, that's the rust that forms around the, uh, the outsides, around the edges of the iron fallout particle, um, which holds it onto the paint. So by dissolving that rust, you can then use your pressure washer and blast it off and it will push them out of the way. It stops them from sticking to the paint. So that's absolutely fine. Shake it well, apply liberally to all surfaces and wheels. Yes, good idea, good idea, I like that, yes. They're not just saying it's for paint, use it for wheels too, because your wheels are going to have iron fallout on them because of the, the metal to metal abrasion going on in there. So that's fine. Uh, yeah, so spray it on, uh, it will, uh, after five minutes, it will turn purple. Rinse it thoroughly, ensuring all panel gaps are thoroughly rinsed, removing any residue from the product. Great, yes. And then go ahead and use number one super gloss. So they are definitely saying use these as a primer. So yes, use number, it, it does actually tell you, use this, then super clean, then super gloss. That's fine, I've got no issue with that. That they're telling you, you wanna use super gloss, but I would do it the other way around and use the shampoo first. What I'm also going to do today is test, because they say it's a foamy shampoo and they don't make a snow foam, my car is filthy right now. My car is really dirty uh, from all the winter grime that we get up here in the Northeast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up my snow foam lance with the shampoo as well. I'm gonna use it at a 10 to one dilution ratio. So I'm gonna put about 50 mil of the, uh, the shampoo, maybe even 100 mil, and then fill up the rest with water, get a nice, uh, hopefully a foamy spread. It might not work, it might do nothing because not every shampoo can be used as a snow foam alternative. But it, they say it's foamy, so you never know, it might just do it. So I'm gonna throw some into the snow foam lance as well and let that dwell on the car to allow it to soak, to hopefully try and eat at some of the dirt and make the dirt removal a little bit easier. So let's take it out to the car now. So as you can see here, I mixed a solution of 100 milliliters of shampoo to 500 milliliters of water. And it did actually do a decent job. It seemed to cling to the car. Not as thick as some other snow foams, but certainly not as bad as some other shampoos I've tried in the past. So it actually did a decent job. Even though I have sped things up here a bit, you can definitely see that uh, it's clinging to the car well. And I've used thinner snow foams than this. Now even sped up quite a bit, you can see that the snow foam doesn't really want to draw off the car. I keep saying snow foam. I'm using it like a snow foam, but it is just a shampoo. But it's hanging around well, and that's meaning that, and that means that it's clinging to the car and helping to soak it and soak the dirt. It comes off the car nice and easily, and I did find that Having this on the car, soaking the dirt, did help me re remove the vast majority of dirt from the car. It really, really did do a good job, actually. Certainly better than putting nothing on the car. Now, as far as the shampoo into the bucket is concerned, 50 milliliters went into about 10-ish liters, maybe a bit more than that, 12 liters, perhaps. But you can see that it's quite a runny shampoo. It's quite thin in the bottle. Uh, that was very interesting to me because generally speaking, shampoos which are thicker tend to produce a thicker foam and shampoos which are thinner don't do quite so well. But you could see here it was very thin, which made it very easy to mix into the water, which was good. You could also see there's some bubbles starting, but dipping the pressure washer in there, making sure it's fully mixed around and then lifting it up and blasting some air in gave me very quickly 
half a bucket of foam. If you like foamy shampoos, this is definitely for you. The only drawback here was that because I had half a bucket of shampoo and half a bucket of foam, I had to reach through that big thick layer of foam to actually reach the water. But the suds worked well and there was a decent amount of slickness to this. It's not the slickest shampoo I've ever used, but it's certainly not the worst either. And you can see my technique there, I'm using two different wash mitts and every time I rinse a mitt I'm actually dragging it against the side of the bucket to help remove some of the dirt there. That's been very useful with these wash mitts. But that foam really goes a long way and it stays thick. It's a nice foam, it's nice. If you like a, a foamy shampoo this is really really up there with some of the best. Now the rinse off was nice and easy, there was no streaking, the suds were not difficult to remove, everything was pretty much as you would expect most modern shampoos today. So you can see the car is looking much nicer now, it's clean, uh, there's still some protection coming through there. You can see on the ground there's loads of foam left over from shampooing and from uh, using it as a snow foam so uh, fun fact it was uh, still there the next day actually it's done a decent job good shampoo nice to use uh, nice and slick feeling under the mitt and uh, yeah you can see the beading coming back on the bonnet there as uh, some of the, the protection that was there has been slightly revived now that the dirt has been washed off. And in the bucket you can see here it looks almost shaving foam consistency. Uh, this is what was left over from the wash process and uh, it was really really creamy and thick. Not a slick feeling foam but definitely loads there. That was after the end of the whole car wash. So the iron fallout now, the, uh, the detox, here I've sprayed it onto the wing and the wheel, uh, spraying it onto half the bonnet as well, just to show if there's any possibility that this could detrimentally, if that's a word, detrimentally affect the sealant that was there before. After five minutes, obviously I couldn't show it on the paint because it's a black car, but on the wheels here you can definitely see the iron fallout is uh, having a reaction here. So this is the purple, reddish purple color, uh, which shows up when the rust has been dissolved. So now all you need is a good, strong spray with your pressure washer to knock off those iron fallout contaminants. And you can see it there looking like raspberry ripple now as it pours off from inside the wheel. Obviously there was more inside the barrel of the wheel, uh, as the spray went on, so you can definitely see it's coming out there, there was a real reaction going on, and out it pours. So it's done a job there, it's done a good job. Now I want to have a look and see if there's any change to the water repellency from the old sealant that was on the wing here. Now being a vertical panel, it's harder to tell. There is still some protection there, you can see the water is sheeting and beading a bit. But I do think that the, uh, the fallout remover does have a, a slightly negative impact on the protection. I've also sprayed it onto half of the left side of the bonnet. You can see it's a sort of foamy consistency. It's, it's slightly soapier. Uh, but here on the right hand side of the bonnet, nothing was applied. On the left side was the detox. And you can see there that the water is sticking to the panel more than it would on the right hand side. You'll see the side by side here in a second. So there you go, you can definitely see a difference there. The right hand side is sheeting its water much faster than the left hand side. A real obvious difference there. Here we go with a slow pull across from left to right. 
If they were working at the same speed, the left side would sheet first. But as you can see, the right side has cleared its panel quicker than the left. So there is a small detrimental effect to using iron fallout removers on your paint if you have a sealant already there. You can see the same thing on the wing here. The left side of the wing was sprayed, the right side wasn't, and so the left side sheets its water a little bit more slowly. Again, there is some pinkish purplish colouring going on there, and that means that there was some fallout on the wheels. Great, I've also got water on the lens. How handy is that? But there you go, you see it running off the car. Now what I did was I removed any protection from the bonnet whatsoever, so there's actually nothing here. I used an abrasive shampoo to make sure that the whole bonnet was exactly the same. What I'm doing here is applying the number one super gloss directly to as dry a panel as possible. You can actually see it's a little bit damp and that's because it started raining. It wasn't too heavy so I just went with it. That explains why there's a little bit of streaking going on there. It's just from the rain as it was coming down. But the left side has had three squirts of the super gloss and then has been wiped over and then buffed off. And you can see the immediate difference there. The right side had nothing on it and therefore the right side is holding on to the water. The left side is repelling that water very nicely. But this gave me an opportunity to try it as a drying aid because they did tell me early on when I first tried this product that the product could be applied wet but it wouldn't last as long. Here you can see spraying it onto a wet panel. Yeah, yes, Becky, we know what you're talking about. You can see the difference there, that there is an immediate change in the surface tension on the paint there, which means that the water is trying to repel already. So just a quick microfiber drying towel, wiping over the panel to pick up most of the water and spread that product around, nearly losing the towel there. <laughs> and then giving it a buff off just to remove everything else. So now we have a dry panel which has had some protection applied. And let's give it one final buff for luck. So now let's have a look at the water behavior after using it as a drying aid. And you can see there it is, well, it's practically the same. Very little difference between them. It is ever so slightly slower coming off the right hand side of the panel versus the left and that's the difference between applying it as a drying aid versus applying it directly to the paint as a sealant. All right so the the overall opinion on this range of products is first of all the shampoo because that's where I would start not the iron fallout remover and I like the shampoo. Um, I genuinely like it. It's pH neutral, so it doesn't contain any waxes or sealants or water repellent uh, additives or properties or anything like that. It doesn't add anything to your paint. It's simply a pH neutral shampoo. It's very foamy and sudsy, which is nice. Some people really want a, sh uh, a nice foamy sudsy shampoo like that. So that's nice. It smells good. The dilution ratio needs to be confirmed. Yeah, I think they need to clarify their position on what they think is the actual suitable dilution ratio. How much is it? If it is it 50 mil to a 10 liter bucket, 50 mil to a 20 liter bucket? Because that I think would have a, a bearing on it. I mean, my favorite shampoo uh, needs 20 to 30 mil for a, a four or five gallon bucket of water. That's at least, you know, that's more than 15 litres of water anyway. That makes it very good value for money. If this is 50 mil to 10 litres of water, it's not as good. It's not bad, but it's not as good as some others. But it's certainly very, very foamy and sudsy and you can see it, it's crazy. It's got a bigger head than the, the pints at the local pub. So, not bad shampoo at all actually. The Super Detox Iron Fallout Remover. Um, I wish it was, I wish it was more of a, a two-in-one. Um, 
I know I'm asking a lot because there's uh, there's not many of them out there. What I mean by two and one is something that will affect your iron fallout and tar uh, because they don't make a tar remover and this only affects the iron fallout. It doesn't affect any tar that's on your paint. Um, now you can go and buy tar removers, they're not expensive, but for the average Joe, and I do think that Carplan are a brand which cater for the average person, I don't think they maybe know enough so they buy this and think, okay, I'll give it a try and it gets rid of iron, good, very good. They don't talk about tar and they don't talk about any other contaminants that may be on the paint, which is a shame because you're not removing everything with this. It would be nice if they had a mild tar removal ability from this as well. But then again, you're gonna have to wipe it as opposed to rinsing it off. So yeah, that's just in an ideal world. In an ideal world, it'd be nice to have a two-in-one. We can't always get that though. Um, but however, it does work as an iron fallout remover. Uh, is it the best iron fallout remover I've seen? No, I've seen others that react better. I've seen others that go on easier. This is kind of a, a thicker substance, um, which means that it doesn't spread quite as easily. So you need to use more of it. I went over the entire car with this once and I used half a bottle, that's a lot. And keep in mind, it wasn't the, the whole car, it was just all the lower half of the car. So everything below the glass, I sprayed this onto. And yeah, I used a lot. So I know it's not something you're going to be using regularly, you're not gonna be using it all the time, but I wish it was maybe just a bit thinner or a bit more active and it would work more because you maybe get more uses out of it. Uh, as it stands, a car the size of mine, two cars, uh, is all you're going to get out of one of these bottles. So keep that in mind. And then um, the, the Super Gloss, well I mean I, I don't want to say too much about this because I did a review about it before and I liked it. It does leave a, a shiny glossy surface, it certainly does look nice right now looking out at the, the car. You could definitely see the instant water repelling ability. You uh, can apply this very very easily to practically every surface of your car. I mentioned that before. Uh, so paintwork, glass, rubber, lights, trim and chrome, just anything. And so it's a it's a very good spray sealant is basically what that is. It can also be used as a drying aid which is really good. So spraying it onto a wet car and going over with a drying towel will help you dry the car a little bit faster and leave behind some protection. So that's a great bonus as well though they don't mention that. I do remember asking them a long time ago can you apply it wet? And they said they don't really recommend it, but absolutely you can. It just clearly won't last as long. But if you're using it as a, a drying aid, every time you wash your car and then you dry it afterwards, a few sprays per panel of this with your, your towel on there, you're going to go around the car very quickly, drying it off, removing any surface water, uh, minimizing the chance of any streaks or smears, any water beads lying around, any water marks appearing, and you're going to leave some shiny protection. So that's a good thing. I'm really, I'm still very pleased with this. I'm happy with uh, the fact that this is still a good product because I, I liked it in the past. And the shampoo is decent and the iron fallout remover is okay. It's not the best, it's not the worst. That's the way it goes. But um, thank you very much to Tetrasil for sending down these products uh, again because it's nice to see that they've now created a range around that number one branding the number one super branding. So if they made a number one super tar, that would be good. If they made a number one super snow foam, that would be great. Yeah, well, we'll see what goes on. This might just be the extent of the range or they might expand it a little bit further. But if you're interested in them, you can pick them up many places because they're in stores as well as available online. So uh, feel free to go and check them out. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and also ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video uploads. In the meantime, I've been Specky. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.